Sports Meteorologist Tom Miners with you here with an update on that severe thunderstorm warning I was just telling you about. A tornado warning has now been issued for Sampson County for that exact area of rotation I was just telling you about. Again, this is in the southern part of Sampson County between Taylor's Bridge and between Harrell's there in southern parts of Sampson County. This warning continues until 1.15. So at the moment, we've been watching a couple of different areas where we have this potential for rotation going on with these thunderstorms, and it's been kind of in and out, honestly. The thunderstorm has not been consistently uh, showing that there's been rotation going on. Ultimately, again, these thunderstorms still are capable of producing damaging winds. That's why the severe thunderstorm warning was originally issued. Um, and ultimately, these storms still are producing heavy rainfall and frequent lightning. Uh, I'm expecting a lot of this activity to continue to basically do what it has been doing, which has kind of been pulsing, really, um, showing frequent lightning at times and some heavy rainfall. And these thunderstorms still are, again, producing a risk for flash flooding as well. Um, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at these thunderstorms as they've uh, been moving, again, mostly through parts of Sampson County, most recently Bladen County. And I was just keeping an eye on our touchscreen here. I might end up uh, coming over to do some coverage with you here over on the touchscreen while meteorologist Nate Harrington joins me in the Weather Center, uh, keeping an eye on some of the reports and things like that. Here's a closer look at that uh, tornado warning right now near the community of Delway and also in Harrells. That's where we have this potential tornado right now, which is radar indicated. Uh, this is Highway 421 as it stretches from Clinton all the way down through the southernmost parts of Sampson County, uh, putting this in play mode here. I'll be able to just show you a little bit more of the regional information since we are uh, cutting into our newscast here on Spectrum News 1 uh, for this potential tornado here at 1246 right now. A warning has been issued for southern Sampson County, and we've actually got three different warnings going on in southern Sampson County. We have a flash flood warning, a severe thunderstorm warning, and also the tornado warning. That was just recently issued. Now, ultimately, these thunderstorms, again, they're still going to be capable of producing uh, locally heavy rainfall and frequent lightning. A tornado warning means, though, you need to get into the lowest floor of your home mm -hmm. and then the centermost part of your home and away from any windows. We also have a marginal risk for severe weather all over North Carolina today. While damaging winds are going to be the main concern, it is possible that we may end up dealing with another severe thunderstorm warning possible of producing a tornado or also producing uh, flash flooding and strong winds. Uh, some tornado safety tips for you here. If you're in southern Sampson County near Harrells along, around Highway 13, you're going to want to make sure that you're getting into the lowest floor of your home in the innermost room, staying away from windows and putting as much distance between you and the outside of your home as possible. Also, the Spectrum News app is going to be handy because if there are power outages and things like that, uh, well, if you lose power, you can actually continue to follow Spectrum News 1 on the app there on your smartphone. And then you can watch live local coverage as well. So that will be a handy way to keep informed with the weather as it continues to make its way through your area. Now these showers and thunderstorms again are mostly affecting parts of Sampson County. Uh, we also have some scattered thunderstorms that have just recently developed in Alamance County and now moving into Orange County. And uh, I know that at least based on our forecast for the last couple of days, uh, meteorologist Nate Harrington, Chief Meteorologist Gary Stevenson will be covering those this evening. And Nate, that's part of the forecast that we've had to watch, unfortunately, for the last couple of days after a nice break from the rain. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and something else about this storm is uh, the tornadic worn storm that you see in Sampson County there, which is right now the couplet that we're watching, the, 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 where the most rotation is, where we think the tornado might be if there is one on the ground, uh, is near Delway, which is right on Highway 421 in uh, eastern Sampson County. So if you're in the community of Delway, it's, uh, it's time to get to a safe spot and let's stay there for at least another five, ten minutes or so before we clear this up. But this storm is moving 20 miles an hour. So that's like uh, driving through a school zone. It's, uh, mm. it's pretty slow. Uh, normally, if you have a, a storm like this, a tornadic storm, you want it to move quickly and get, get going, get to where it needs to be. But moving at 20 miles an hour, that is a snail's pace when we're uh, talking about a, a, a tornadic warm storm. So there you see it right there on your screen. Uh, for, uh, Delway near 421, uh, that's the spot where we think the rotation is probably the strongest and where you need to be in a safe spot uh, at the moment. 
Right now, we have a little bit more of complicated nature to how we cover the weather here on Spectrum News 1. As you probably already well know, we cover the weather all across North Carolina with the largest team of meteorologists in the state. Um, that is why we have different parts of the state covered by different meteorologists. And uh, Nate is gracious to help me cover here both central North Carolina and the coast and our uh, producers are going to need to handle this here as well as perhaps mass control because we now have two separate severe thunderstorm warnings for two separate markets that we cover in North Carolina, namely for those that are covered by Raleigh, Fayetteville, and Durham, and those that are covered for Wilmington, Jacksonville, Moorhead City. Uh, so our, our mass control operators, those that are working tirelessly behind the scenes, will need to combine those coverage, the coverage of those two markets, uh, since we'll need to be covering for our Wilmington viewers as well as for our Raleigh and Fayetteville viewers right now. Two separate severe thunderstorm warnings in place. One that's going to be in effect for Duplin County until 1.15. Um, and we've actually got, it looks like, two separate warnings there. Uh, well, excuse me, no, a warning, yeah, that for, that's for Duplin County until 1.30. And also another tornado warning that we have that we've been talking about for Sampson County that lasts until 1.15 as well. So both warnings will expire then. The latest image right here is still showing that we've got a potential for strong winds in Sampson County, again, right until 1.15. That's why the severe thunderstorm warning was issued earlier. Also the possibility for a tornado. We've got a separate severe thunderstorm storm warning that could be producing the tornado in Sampson County, just near Harrell's, as uh, Nate was just telling you a little bit ago. And also now a new severe thunderstorm warning that's just been issued for Duplin County for the communities of Wallace, and that's going to be mostly for the southwestern corner of parts of Duplin County until 1.30. So that's a little bit of a look, again, as to the different alerts that we've got. Uh, it's possible that we could see that rotation stretch a little bit farther east into Duplin County. The warning that you see there that's on your screen is just for Duplin County until 1.30, uh, but the rotation that's associated with the tornado warning that's in Sampson County has what's prompted Duplin County to need to take their tornado precautions as well. Let's give you a street level look then at what we're dealing with in this part of the viewing area. Again, a wide out view is going to show you that this is the only severe complex of thunderstorms that we're dealing with right now, but we have newly formed thunderstorms developing over Orange County on their way into Chapel Hill in just a moment. We also have thunderstorms that have just recently moved through Jacksonville. And the only severe storms at the moment are still in southern Sampson County. And there's the community of Delway. We now just got continuation of that tornado warning for Sampson County until 1.15 at 1251, or now 12.52. It just a uh, minute just changed here. At 12.52, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located near Harrells or 11 miles west of Wallace, and it is moving east at 15 miles per hour. So let me give you an estimated time of arrival for those that are watching us in Duplin County now that we're covering um, both our Wilmington viewing area and our Raleigh viewing area right now. It's a slow moving thunderstorm. That's what also prompted the flash flood warning earlier for communities like Waycross and Bryce's Crossroads. This thunderstorm that could be producing a tornado is going to be overhead in the next 5 to 15 minutes. Duff Creek also 124 estimated time of arrival. Rose Hill at 129 and Teachy at 136. I also want to try to extend that, um, uh, that well, that uh, tracking a little bit out farther, just to include the community of Wallace, to show you it'll arrive at about 135. So that particular thunderstorm again, which could be producing a tornado, is estimated to arrive in those communities over the next 15 to 30 minutes here. An updated look also at the thunderstorm potentially producing a tornado in Delway. Uh, is still showing some weak signs of rotation. It helps, at least it helps me, to put this in motion for you just so that you can see how it has kind of morphed over the last hour or so. And that rotation is still centered on Delway, though it does seem to have broadened out a little bit over the last 30 minutes. So over Highway 421, this is a rather small polygon for, again, a potential tornado moving through eastern parts of Sampson County into Duplin County now. It prompted the new severe thunderstorm warning for Duplin County until 1.15. And so if you are in this area, 
You need to take your tornado precautions, getting into the lowest floor of your home and staying on the centermost part of your home, putting as much distance between you and the outside as possible. Seek shelter in a sturdy building. Uh, you want to not get in a vehicle at this time or drive anywhere if you're in that tornado polygon, but instead just staying on the lowest floor of your home and the centermost part of your home with as much distance between you and the outside as possible. We now have, to make matters even more complicated, <laughs> Nate, a third severe thunderstorm warning to discuss. Yeah, for uh, Bladen County until 2 o'clock. That's right. We have, uh, you know, a risk for damaging winds today. Mm -hmm. I, I think going forward, that's going to probably be our main concern I think for so. thunderstorms, right? Um, not for large hail, but that warning continues until 2 o'clock now. Um, so the National Weather Service has issued this warning, and now a new tornado warning has yeah, been issued for Dublin County. I figured that was going to happen. Yeah. So we've got, um, well, a handful. Uh, yeah, we've got, got a lot going on now. Um, it is interesting, though. I do want to point out that the severe thunderstorm warnings that have been issued, typically we're really just looking for a minimum of 58 miles per hour for a warning to be issued. In this case, some of the most recent warnings have been issued for the potential for 70 mile per hour winds within some of these thunderstorms. So these are really starting to tap into some instability in mm -hmm. the atmosphere. And I'm actually going to take off the warning polygons and just show you the thunderstorms themselves so you can focus on some of the communities that are dealing with these thunderstorms, namely White Oak, Elizabethtown, Harrells, Taylor's Bridge, Wallace, Beulahville, and Warsaw, as well as I would include Clinton in this, though it does appear that the southernmost part of the thunderstorm has moved away from Clinton. Clinton, you still have that flash flood warning, which continues until I believe 1.30 for that particular thunderstorm. We've really just started to see the lightning count ramp up on some of these thunderstorms as well, especially the ones that are over uh, parts of Elizabethtown or just northeast of Elizabethtown. I am a little bit curious to kind of uh, make sure that those in Bladen County are aware that it's between White Lake and Elizabethtown, pretty much right along Highway 701. Um, those are the areas that really need to be watching that storm. And, and I'm watching, and I'm looking at the velocity data on that new thunderstorm warning in Bladen County. You look at that couplet. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's if that's not a tornado warning in the next 10 minutes, mm -hmm. uh, I would be quite shocked. Yeah. Because that looks that looks more impressive right now than the original couplet that we had on the uh, on the uh, the Dupl or the uh, Sampson County and now the Duplin County uh, tornado warning. So if that doesn't get uh, upgraded to a tornado warning, I'd be very, very shocked. So if you're watching us in Elizabethtown or White Lake, I'd, I'd be heads up. Uh, this thing is probably going to go tornadic if I had to guess. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see. And it's, and it's interesting that we've got this now starting to happen. The heating of the day, the sea breeze, the, the, the coastal plain is an interesting place. It's when it, when it, it, it really is. <laughs> you can get some weird, wild stuff that happens along the coastal plain. Anywhere east of I-95, you get a decent sea breeze going. You get some of the land interaction with the sea breeze, and really anything can happen. And I think that's why we've got these spins in the atmosphere now. They're fairly weak. It's not a, you know, it's not a mothership supercell or anything yeah. like that. But there is enough spin in the atmosphere. Low top supercells, 10, 15, 20,000 foot supercells. Uh, can produce just as much damage uh, as, a, as, a, as a tornado that could stay on the ground for a while. So we've right. we got we to watch these pretty quick, uh, very mm. intently, I think, because these will spin up very quickly. Yeah. Um, and the good news is the rotation near Delway moving away, uh, but it's also starting to open up a little bit, too. Yeah, and that's what you can see there on the big box that Nate's covering there for you, the rotation, a velocity signature there in the small box. You've got more of a regional view since we are cutting into our local newscast here on Spectrum News 1 at the top of the hour here, coming up on 1258 in just a moment. And everything you've been saying, Nate, is also what... Um, an mm -hmm. alumni of mine at the National Weather Service in Moorhead City, Carl Barnes, is telling us with the National Weather Service that these s cluster of storms is still showing that persistent low-level rotation. Mm -hmm. um, it could build to the surface of a tornado, and so um, they're um, reaching out to partners like us in the media for yeah. reports. Um, this particular area, though, if you've ever driven from the beach in, say, the Triangle area, to Wilmington or to Wrightsville, you know how it's very sparsely populated. Yep. It's very flat, um, and it's, there's a lot of trees still in this area, so it still might be difficult uh, to spot a funnel cloud or something like that, mm -hmm. because based on what I'm seeing on radar, it does look like a lot of this activity will be rain-wrapped. We're seeing a lot of cell mergers here. Yes, uh, right? a, a lot. lot. Yeah, and yeah. it's just 
allowing for a lot of lightning to occur with a lot of these thunderstorms as well. Um, so these are dangerous thunderstorms regardless if a tornado is being produced or not. Uh, but again, I did see that tag two from any of those blue polygons, those blue um, areas that you see on the map that we certainly have a chance for strong winds. Straight line, potentially damaging winds could be occurring within these thunderstorms. And as I've been mentioning um, ever since we started um, uh, talking about flash flooding earlier this morning at 4 a.m., uh, these thunderstorms are not moving a whole lot. The tornado warning when it first went out, went out for a storm moving at 15 miles per hour. That's what these, that's what these are. They're moving 20 to 15, 20 miles per hour. And that is just... <laughs> It's excruciatingly slow it for a is. thunderstorm because it just sits over the same area for 15, 20 minutes, and you've got you know inch to inch and a half to two inch rainfall rates per hour, and you're going to pile up a lot of rain in, in places that have already gotten it too. I mean, we've seen some storms kind of uh, popping up here and there along the coastal plain the last couple of days. These are by far the strongest and by far the most. Uh, uh, prolific lightning producers and uh, the heaviest rainfall too that we've seen this week as well. Yeah, a lot of reports came out just uh, about a couple hours ago actually from Sampson County of road closures yep. in northern Sampson County due to high water. We had measurements in feet of how much water was covering some roads this morning in Chatham County. So these storms have a history, we'll say, mm -hmm. of producing flash flooding as well as now um, we'll be keeping an eye out for reports of any damage from any of the storms mm -hmm. that are still moving through these areas. Again, we've got multiple severe thunderstorm warnings and rather than go through details on how long these storms are going to last for and when the warnings will expire, I'll let you know that at least the tornado warnings that have been issued will conclude at 1.30. So at the moment, Duplin County is in a tornado warning until 1.30, but we still have severe thunderstorm warnings in our Raleigh viewing area up until about that same time, about 1.15 or so. Uh, so we'll continue at least through that time uh, for some of this combined coverage in our Raleigh and coastal viewing area. Please make sure that you're getting out of the lowest floor of your home and in the centermost part of your home. Whether you're in a severe thunderstorm or tornado warning, both areas actually have pretty much the same needs, yeah. right? Oh, for sure. So Absolutely. We'll, so we'll need to make sure that we're getting into those areas in our home, not in vehicles, um, preferably not in a um, trailer, either in a sturdy shelter with a foundation, lowest floor of your home, centermost part of your home, with as much distance between you and the outside as possible. This storm, really the complex, the whole compl complex of it, is on Interstate 40 right now, mm -hmm. and it's a Friday. So that leaves me concerned. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. That you got people coming and going, uh, basically, right going. now. Yeah, right and, on Interstate 40. And I'm a little bit, uh, my, my hopes for the uh, tornado warnings to be uh, maybe canceled a little bit early. Uh, these storms are actually... <laughs> Uh, we talked about cell mergers. Yeah. When we get a cell merger, we can have one of two things happen. We can have an enhancement of the storm. We can have a strengthening of the storm. Definitely the lightning can be a lot more enhanced. Or we can get both storms kind of competing for the same energy, the same yeah. uh, juice in the atmosphere, so to speak. And it looks like that's what we have going on with that tornado warning storm right now in Duplin County. Mm -hmm. Losing its structure, losing its... Uh, it's losing its uh, couplet. It's losing that spin in the atmosphere. I'm going to turn the uh, velocity back on and show you definitely a shell of its former self. I mean, we had near Delway, you know, just 10 minutes ago, this thing was rocking and rolling at about 1245. And then you steadily see the couplet that really pronounced red and green right next to each other. That shows you the rotation in the atmosphere. It's all but gone now. It uh, doesn't mean we don't have a uh, tornado on the ground or it doesn't mean we couldn't have damage from straight line winds. However, the, the rotation, that low-level rotation that we'd normally get with a tornado, it's just not as pronounced as it was uh, just 15 minutes ago. So that's great news. The cell mergers can, can help or they can, uh, they can definitely be a hindrance for sure. We are so starting to see a lot more lightning with that storm too, yeah. by the way. Yeah, a ton. The one in Bladen County really is doing that. Northeast yeah. of Elizabethtown, I've got those two areas in the small box just below where you could can see our image on your phone or on your device or on your television. Uh, we got two z zones that we're watching for rotation. Um, some really weak rotation, as you heard Nate mention. Um, both of them 
are making their way through parts of Sampson, Bladen, and now Duplin, and, or excuse me, Bladen County, as well as uh, Duplin County, those two especially, not so much Sampson County anymore. Um, but again, sometimes these can also indicate damaging winds, and so these systems are going to continue to make their way farther east. One of them is crossing Highway 701 in Bladen County right now, and another is getting ready to cross Highway 117 and Interstate 40. It's moving very slowly. So good news, at least, as Nate mentioned, the rotation has weakened to some extent, uh, but still prolific lightning producers, these storms are, as they're moving through Sampson County. Um, now, the close-up view, Nate Scott, of the storm that's on the right side of the screen here. It, it is starting to show all that lightning here. Yeah. Uh, it's literally covering some of the names of the towns on the map. There's so much. Um, and so in just a short period of time, we have seen um, significant amounts of that. That's typically an indication not only for how the atmosphere could behave, um, but also how these particular thunderstorms are behaving. So the atmosphere is primed um, to produce some strong storms today. And on the bottom of the screen here, on the left side at least, uh, I've got an image that's showing a wide out view of storm tracker Doppler radar because we've been getting what are called special weather statements, the step below a severe thunderstorm warning for brand new thunderstorms that are starting to return to the triangle. Uh, we've got that storm just west of Durham now, um, almost just at a quick glance, looking almost super cellular in size. When but, you get the Lone Rangers out there, that's, right? a, that's a scary thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. these will start to, again, produce gusty winds too. That's why there's a polygon around that particular alert for Chapel Hill, for Hillsboro, for areas south of Highway 70 and Interstate 40. Um, but pretty much this one is a frequent lightning producer and a heavy rainfall producer for a part of North Carolina that has already had significant rainfall today. And this also is going to be a clue as to what the rest of the afternoon is going to look like, where we're going to see those thunderstorms create new thunderstorms as we'll mm -hmm. have what's called outflow boundaries and we'll just have a whole mess of activity as we're going ahead into the rest of the afternoon into the early evening. But again, one of the main reasons why Nate and I are talking to you right now here at five minutes after one o'clock outside of a normal weather on the winds forecast is for the tornado warnings that continue for Sampson and Duplin counties. Oh, the Sampson uh, County tornado warning will expire. Uh, they rather, should it'll it. just be yeah, canceled. There you go. Um, <laughs> I was just going to say, they should probably cancel it. They should. It just left the polygon, right? Yep. So now we just have the one tornado warning for Duplin County until 1.30, which again includes a good chunk of the I-40 corridor mm -hmm. through Duplin County. Um, so it's a Friday. If you had a beach trip planned today, go ahead and hold off on that for a little bit. If you were trying to leave the Triangle, uh, those thunderstorms are still going to be in the area for, it looks like, perhaps the next hour just because... We're starting a train there. And it's a train, we are right? Starting a, yeah, we're starting to see those thunderstorms just kind of back build and form what we call a, a training effect, basically moving over the same area. Uh, thunderstorm after thunderstorm, and that's why we probably, uh, I wouldn't doubt they're going to issue a flood advisory or some sort of flood uh, flood alert for uh, for that region as well. I'm sorry to cut you off, Tom. No, but, no, um, you're fine. Um, Magnolia, Rose Hill, and Wallace, uh, these towns are just west of I-40 in Duplin County. Heads up, uh, the rotation looks very weak. Doesn't mean it can't spin back up. So let's, uh, let's all get to that safe place. Magnolia, Rose Hill, and Wallace. Uh, Wallace isn't even in the polygon, but I'd, I'd still get to a safe spot right now. Uh, if you're watching us in any of those towns in Duplin County, let's get to a safe place and uh, we'll ride this thing out. This very slow moving uh, tornado warning. And you got some rainfall amounts that are uh, <laughs> pretty stark there. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, significant for much of those that are along Highway 421. Um, these are estimated by Doppler radar. But I got a report today from someone getting over five inches of rainfall in Granville County, and it was very close, very close to what radar was estimating. So I, I believe these estimates right here um, of over three inches of rainfall in parts of Sampson County and closer to a half an inch just west of Wallace in parts of Duplin County and north, er, northern parts of Bladen County, 2.8 inches of rainfall over the last several hours there in, uh, in areas north and northeast of White Oak and also from Elizabethtown, too. That's actually a three-hour estimate. If we go to six hours, uh, the totals will start to jump up again, too, um, especially uh, over by Newton Grove, 5.2 inches of rainfall estimated in that same time, in the six-hour time frame there. So, yeah, there is a potential for flash flooding in these zones. And, uh, well, frankly, I would 
Um, not be surprised if we'd had an additional flash flood warnings issued for parts of Bladen, Sampson, and Duplin counties. Yeah. Uh, because as you were talking about how these storms have been training, Nate, it certainly looks like they'll continue to do that. Yeah, um, I think so. And this, is, this will be one of these days where you're going to find a storm, it's going to pass, and then you'll wait probably 20, 30 minutes, like I did this morning, literally. Yeah. Like I did this morning, wasn't checking my radar, uh, taking the daughter to school, big thunderstorm passed, okay, good. And it starts raining like right as I <laughs> dropped her off. So... All that to say, I think that's what we're going to see today. You're going yeah. to see a little bit of a break, and then just the juiciness of the atmosphere, outflow boundaries, lots going on in the atmosphere today and tomorrow, too. I don't yeah. think we see the kind of severe weather threat um, in most of the state like we do today. However, I think we see some big thunderstorms, and I think it's going to be another one of the times where we have to watch for very heavy rainfall, kind of training over one spot uh, pretty constantly tomorrow afternoon, too. You've got uh, rotation there on the yes. big screen. Let's talk about that again, too. Yeah, it, it still doesn't look very impressive, still very open, uh, but the uh, tornado warning continues. They're probably going to just let this roll until 1.30 because of the nature of these. Uh, Low-topped rotation, when you get rotation that's, you know, uh, in the lower levels of the atmosphere, the, the storms aren't overly big. I know they're showing a lot of lightning, but these storms aren't, aren't your big classic supercell thunderstorms. Uh, you're probably going to see quick spin-up, and when I say spin-up, I mean quickly rotating, not weak rotation and not something that we can just kind of uh, disregard, but I'm talking about quick spin-up tornadoes that can come and go very fast. The rotation can reach the ground, can become, be a tornado for 20, 30 seconds, and wherever it happens to land, that's, uh, that's where the, uh, the damage is going to be. So it might not even show up on radar, uh, to be quite honest with you. I mean, I'm using uh, Raleigh radar right now. We're kind of on the edge of the, uh, of the acceptable uh, range here that we would use. So uh, if you've got maybe Moorhead City radar, that might uh, help out, or even Wilmington. Uh, I don't have that on my radar tools uh, at the moment, but that could, uh, that could show us a little bit better uh, velocity mm -hmm. da uh, data. But, uh, but regardless, uh, this is still going to be an issue for us, I think, here for the next uh, half an hour or so, or one thirty, so 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, that storm is coming up with about Four, we're looking at the, at the lowest layer, about 4,000 feet above ground. So, yeah, that's pretty high up yeah. in the atmosphere from the Raleigh radar site. It is a little bit closer to the Wilmington radar site. Kind of in a no man's land right now, actually. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of lightning going on with these thunderstorms. If you're watching us from Duplin, from Bladen, or from southern Sampson counties, uh, that's where we have severe thunderstorm warnings, the latest of which doesn't expire until 2 p.m. for parts of Bladen County in our coastal viewing area. Area. We still have a severe thunderstorm warning for Sampson County in our central North Carolina viewing area until 1.15. Um, and so I'll leave it to our uh, producers to decide how to handle this. But what we've got here is our Raleigh viewing area basically dealing with scattered showers and thunderstorms in our coastal viewing area right through the whole afternoon. And at times we're going to be dealing with storms like this one, which again are potentially producing straight line winds as well as flash flooding and an isolated tornado. The tornado warning does expire though at 1.30. So that's good news on that front at least. Um, giving you a wide out view since again there's a lot of folks still watching us from areas that are not in alerts. Uh, this view is still showing that much of North Carolina is now starting to wake up to the thunderstorms again. Um, what I mean by that is we just had that brief lull in some of the activity as we were going through the latest hours of this Friday morning after a very active start to the day, some of you may have had uh, the weather impede your morning commute efforts as we were having some strong thunderstorms that were prompting flash flood warnings across the triangle uh, through 7.30 this morning and up until 8.30 in areas north of the triangle. Uh, but now we're just starting to see the thunderstorms tap back into the unstable atmosphere. So new thunderstorms have just recently developed. And uh, what I'd like to do is effort a view from UNC Chapel Hill, which has a view on that thunderstorm mm -hmm. that's closing in on Chapel Hill and Durham right now. Uh, one lone thunderstorm there right now. Ultimately, again, a lot of these thunderstorms today are going to be uh, slow moving. Uh, the one that's actually making its way through Durham and or through, I should say, Chapel Hill right now is moving east at just 30 miles per hour. A lot of the thunderstorms that have prompted severe thunderstorm warnings, though, those have been moving at about 15, 20 miles per hour right now. And if we just give you a view of the last hour, you can actually pick a point in um, parts of Bladen County right now, and it's been raining constantly there, heavily too, for the last hour. 
Um, so these thunderstorms still pose a risk for damaging winds, um, as well as an isolated tornado in Duplin County and flash flooding too. Don't want to count that out. Though if you're watching from Clinton, conditions seem to be slowly improving here um, with each passing moment. So that's good news there. A couple of things you should do if you are watching us from Duplin County is seek shelter in a sturdy building, giving as much distance between you and the outside as possible, staying away from windows and using the Spectrum News app to continue with us and our local coverage if you lose power. If your device is charged, that would allow you to keep up with at least continuous coverage during a tornado warning or weather on the ones coverage for any severe thunderstorm warnings that we cover here. Um, again, you're going to want to make sure that you're taking those kind of precautions, uh, whether for a tornado or for a severe thunderstorm warning. Both would prompt um, action like that. And much of North Carolina is going to be under this risk for severe weather today. We have got a marginal risk for severe thunderstorms in Wilmington, Jacksonville, Fayetteville, Goldsboro, Raleigh, Durham, and Greensboro as well. So meteorologist Nate Harrington and Chief Meteorologist Gary Stevenson will be covering these for you, of course, through the rest of the afternoon and into the early evening as well. Showing more of the, uh, the cell merging and actually this big storm. I think they just uh, maybe adjusted the tornado warning or yeah. continued it. Yep. Yeah. So uh, I think that's their stance. They're just going to continue this just in case this thing spins up. But more cell merging and more of the, the parent thunderstorm, the, the thunderstorm that has a severe thunderstorm warning and a tornado warning with it just kind of absorbing all of these storms that are just yeah. popping up south of it. Uh, anywhere from, say, Wilmington and, and, you know, from Wilmington to, uh, to Duplin County, you got these little cells that are popping up, and you can see it just acting like a big vacuum cleaner, just absorbing all of these storms, and that's enhancing the lightning. That's what it's doing right now. There is a ton of lightning with this storm in Duplin County, but as far as the rotation goes, very weak, if any at all, which is great news. We'll, we'll definitely take that. Um, but a, a storm that could very easily just start rotating once again uh, as it moves through a... Uh, Thankfully, uh, some more sparsely populated land, but there's still some people out there. So folks in Rose Hill and Wallace, the storm's right on top of you now. Heavy rainfall, some gusty wind, most likely with this storm, and the possibility that the storm is, uh, is rotating a bit as well. And you see that uh, donut hole shape there? We, uh, we look at those in a, a situation like this and think there might be a little rotation. So uh, kind of uh, at the uh, intersection there, and I'll, I'll draw a line around it, uh, where you see uh, from between Harold's and Wallace, that circle here, uh, the hole in the radar reflectivity could indicate some rotation, could indicate that the storm may be starting to wrap up a little bit more and produce a little bit more uh, likely chance that we see a tornado. So something we'll keep our eyes on. It's probably why the National Weather Service hasn't canceled uh, the tornado warning, even though uh, the rotation looks fairly weak in the upper levels, five, 6,000 feet above the heads, above our heads. And where this storm is, it's kind of in a radar no man's land. We've got a radar near Wilmington. We've got a radar near Moorhead City. We've got a radar uh, in Raleigh. So it's, uh, it's kind of in between all three of them and doesn't get a great look at, neither one of them get a, a really great look in the lower levels of the storm. So uh, we're, we've come a long way, but we still have a long way to go when it comes to uh, uh, radar interpretation and all that. But uh, overall, still need to uh, be aware, Rose Hill, Wallace, even though Wallace is not included in the tornado warning, I'd, I'd get to a safe spot. I, I would get to a safe spot now, lowest level of your home, away from windows and doors, uh, basement if you've got it, uh, closet, bathroom, and the like. Uh, let's just stay safe. And this thing hasn't even crossed I-40 yet, and it's, yeah. been, <laughs> it's been in the county for about 20 minutes or so, and this thing is just continuing to just crawl. Yeah. Not very fast at all. Yeah, lots of lightning going on there, especially in Bladen and Duplin counties. Uh, rotation, as you were noting earlier, Nate, seems to have weakened a little bit, but just not totally. Not enough. Not enough. Um, this thunderstorm's been just kind of vacillating between uh, showing tightening, weakening, uh, on, or tightening uh, rotation, I should say, on this storm, um, and kind of falling apart. Not as strong as it once was, so that's good news there at least, um, but still something worth monitoring, both for rotation in Bladen and in Duplin counties. Again, we've got three separate warnings still left. We have a severe thunderstorm warning until 2 o'clock for Bladen County. We also have a severe thunderstorm warning uh, co-located <clears throat> with a tornado warning for Duplin County near Wallace. That expires along with the tornado warning at 1.30. And we still have the flash flood warning as well for parts of Sampson County until 1.45. So what you've seen there on the bottom of your, your screen on the left side there is velocity data. It's helping us get a little bit of an idea for whether or not 
<clears throat> we're able to see any tightening going on or rotation or not, but certainly at the moment, it does appear to be fairly weak. Uh, we've had a lot of lightning with these thunderstorms too, as well as rainfall, especially even since early this morning. Um, if we just take a look at the last 12 hours of data, in fact, we can see how much rain or where rain has been most significant over this time period here. And it's with this same thunderstorm that it survived a long trip yeah. all the way from Virginia into North Carolina from overnight last night, just driving into the station at, uh, well, it was about one, no, excuse me, two o'clock this morning. Uh, that thunderstorm was already making way towards Raleigh and producing frequent lightning. And some totals have been measured as over five inches of rainfall. So estimations over five inches are certainly pretty close to being within reason. Uh, those thunderstorms within the warnings right now are producing estimated totals over the last 12 hours of three to six inches of rainfall, wow. folks. Um, and some of these areas don't drain water very well. No especially in this um, area of the river basin, around the Cape Fear River Basin there. Um, so there's going to be a lot of uh, difficulty in trying to mitigate the flash flood threat with that going on in this really flat area too. Um, so significant rainfall prompting a risk for flash flooding today. We have a flood watch for most of central North Carolina um, that lasts into the evening, actually. Most of central North Carolina is going to be dealing with a potential for flash flooding within the thunderstorms into tonight. New severe thunderstorms. Thunderstorm warning. <clears throat> Tornado possible. Uh, thunderstorm damage threat, which is considerable. 70 mile per hour winds, and they just continued it for Bladen County. So yeah. uh, they still are, uh, I guess they just kind of shrunk the polygon a little bit. Yes. And I, I do like now from the National Weather Service, we get these severe thunderstorm warnings, and before, you know, five, ten years ago, you would just get severe thunderstorm warning. It's moving this fast, and that's it. Now you've got, it's Possibly could produce a tornado. Yeah. 70 mile per hour winds, considerable damage threat. We're talking about impacts that are really, really important because these storms are not going to have any hail. Uh, these storms are not going to be hail producers like the storms we had a couple of weeks ago that rolled through here. Totally different uh, environment. And you're, this is all wind. This is all going to be a wind event. If we see any sort of uh, uh, reports at all, these will be wind reports. And speaking of reports, I haven't mm. seen any no. uh, at all. And I would have thought that we're getting some improving conditions near Delway. That was where the rotation was its tightest and right where the tornado warning was issued. So if we've got some reports, they're probably going to come from that area of Sampson County. Just haven't seen them yet. Yeah. So that's encouraging because it's been almost half an hour uh, since the, the tornado warning was first, uh, was first issued. So we have a couple of uh, different severe thunderstorm warnings now, one for Bladen County. That polygon did shrink quite a bit, but mm -hmm. they're really just localizing now or focusing on where the potential is for that tornado. Um, we've got a, a large area of uninhabited land there because that severe thunderstorm warning east of Elizabethtown is in what's called the Bladen Lakes State Forest. Yes. Um, so we've got White Lake uh, just south of the polygon. <clears throat> but farther north, we've got uh, Highway 701, pretty much right along that highway. We've got where the warning is located, and that includes much of the Bay Tree Lake State Natural Area. We've got Big Colby Lake up there, a lot of different lakes there in Bladen County, uh, Tatum Mill Pond Bay, and also um, areas around, say, uh, the Carolina Blueberry Associates, as I'm seeing here on maps, Beard Chapel Baptist Church is there. Uh, we've got Bull Streets in that part of Bladen County where the severe thunderstorm warning is located. But yeah, a lot of uninhabited land there near around Bladen Lakes State Forest. Um, so that's basically about the zone that we're looking at right up Highway 701 as it starts to come into Garland, where you can also see on the map between um, Elizabethtown and Garland on Highway 701 and State Route 210 too. Um, just north of White Lake. That's where the worst part of the thunderstorm is located. That has a warning until 2 o'clock. Um, lots of lightning, though, with that thunderstorm. Very heavy rainfall. So a lot of those areas, since, again, I've mentioned multiple bodies of water, um, be on the alert for localized issues with flash flooding in those zones, too. And let's hope nobody's out on the boat today. Yes. Or at least saw this thing coming. It would yes. be hard to <laughs> probably be hard to miss it with all the lightning that they had. So yeah. that, that's always the risk you run during this time of year. Uh, yeah, uh, and I've, I've been guilty of it, too. Same. Thunderstorms can, can look a ways off, but a lightning strike can, can get you between 6 and 10 miles away from a parent thunderstorm. Mm -hmm. and that, that's kind of a sobering thought. And I'll, I'll get my, my app out, and I'll say, okay, the storm's 10 miles away. I'm, I'm good. But 
literally, any, anywhere between, say, 6 and 10 miles, it might seem like a ways off, but lightning can still strike. It's, it's been documented. It's, uh, it's scientific proof. So uh, it's, it's always good. If you see lightning, hear thunder, get inside. I don't care where you are. Vacation can wait. It is. The, the lake can wait. The yep. pool can wait. Uh, during the summertime, let's just all get inside and be safe. Yep, that's right. Turn up the volume on Spectrum News 1. Yep. Maybe get the app on if you're in the car. I know what it's like. You know what it's like if you've got kids packed in the car and you're trying to get somewhere. Um, it's just better to get there safely rather than quickly. Mm -hmm. um, on Highway 41, in between Wallace and Harrells, uh, that's where we've got the strongest part of this thunderstorm. Um, so there in the community of Wallace seems to be the worst part of the storm. And right up Highway 117 in communities like Tichy and communities like Rose Hill, that's where we've got the worst part of that thunderstorm right now that could be producing um, a tornado as well as straight line winds through Magnolia. Man, that's just a lot of lightning. Yeah, lots of lightning. <laughs> That yeah. storm, you'll hear it coming too. Yeah. Um, and then farther east of some of those communities, you've got another largely uninhabited area of land. The Angola Bay game land is there, right between Highway 117 and State Route 90, in between Maple Hill and Wallace in the southern parts of Duplin County. Uh, again, it's a very confined area around Interstate 40 and Highway 117 that we've got the worst part of the thunderstorm right now, which is also moving into um, parts of Pender County, pretty much right along the Pender and Duplin County line near Watha, north of Murraytown on Interstate 40. Um, that's going to be right along one of the corners, one of the tributaries of the Cape Fear River in the small community of Willard. A lot of uninhabited area here or just very sparsely populated area there in Duplin and northern parts of Pender County. But if you are driving on Interstate 40, um, you know, certainly stop the car. Sorry. If, if you are parked there, <laughs> yeah, right? That's not good. All right, yeah, yeah. our apologies <laughs> on behalf of Mother Nature here for you. Um, but between Warsaw and Watha is the worst part of this thunderstorm um, on Interstate 40 or Highway 117. Oh, and by the way, uh, yeah. your, your buddy at the National Weather Service, Carl Barnes, yeah. uh, the initial rotation that prompted the tornado warning, just like we talked about, weakened. Mm -hmm. But they keep the warning in place because of the spin-ups. Mm -hmm. The worst thing you can do is cancel a tornado warning and mm -hmm. then issue it four minutes later, which has happened also, before mm -hmm. recently. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've had that issue before recently. Uh, and it, it just causes a lot of headaches because people think we're good, and then you're not all of a sudden. So yeah. they're keeping it to the bottom of the hour, so we've got four more minutes, and it looks like they probably will be able to uh, expire this warning uh, at uh, the bottom of the hour, 1.30. But you still have a severe thunderstorm warning for that same storm. I, I, I'm, I don't have any doubts that this thing is probably producing some gusty wind. It might not be... You know, I, uh, it might not be 70, 80 miles an hour, but even 60 mile per hour winds can do damage. So let's all be safe there. And of course, we've got the, the small polygon in Bladen County that we're still keeping our eyes on. Yeah, very localized view there of uh, that thunderstorm. That warning goes until 2 o'clock. The tornado and the severe thunderstorm warning go until 1.30. So at 1.30... What we could do is we could go back to our local newscast and continue to cover in our Weather on the Ones forecast the severe thunderstorm warning in Bladen County for uh, our coastal viewing area. Um, but we also still have some scattered thunderstorms moving around the Triangle now, making their way into Chapel Hill and on their way into Durham County as well. For now, Wake County is not dealing with rain, but it's not going to be long before Wake County sees showers and storms as well. And if you're watching from Fayetteville, you might uh, be a little bit outside of the range, the auditory range of the thunderstorms on the southern side of Cumberland County, but we've got new storms there, and it looks likely that we're going to have to see new flash flood warnings issued because of the thunderstorms that are just building basically upstream mm -hmm. of uh, all of the chaos that we've been covering for you for the last uh, almost hour now over Bladen, Sampson, and Duplin counties. So those thunderstorms all pretty much moving due east yep. and likely to just run into more land that's already well saturated from those thunderstorms today. You've got the storms moving east and right now most likely and we can kind of tell the sea breeze is starting to get kicked up and you're going to see a lot more interaction with these storms and the sea breeze. That can the sea breeze what it can do it, it can enhance storms very very quickly. You can yeah. see quick quick blow ups and uh, showing you now uh, south of the storms that we've got going uh, that's what's happening. You've got the sea breeze starting to interact with a very unstable atmosphere, already thunderstorms. It's not going to take much today, folks, mm -hmm. at all, to get a, a big thunderstorm to go. Don't think we'll see the kind of 
rotation in most of these. These will be generally just run-of-the-mill thunderstorms that can produce some uh, gusty winds. Not all of these storms are going to be severe. This is not a severe weather outbreak day. No. This is just a day where we happen to catch just in the right spot a little bit of rotation and uh, the chances for an isolated tornado. And I still haven't seen any reports yet. And during the middle of the day, you would figure people would be out and about. If there was something to report, we probably would have gotten it already, but uh, haven't had anything from emergency managers or uh, dispatch or police or fire or anyone about uh, any damage reported from um, Delway, which was uh, the spot where if there was going to be a tornado on the ground, it would have been there. Yeah, for sure. You saying that, Nate, actually just jogged my, uh, gave me an idea that one of the things I haven't been looking at right now Traffic is traffic. I saw, I just, I'm seeing it right now. And, <laughs> it's done um, good. <laughs> traffic, yeah, traffic on Interstate Ugh. 40 right now is pretty much at a standstill yep. in between Rose Hill and Warsaw. Yep. Matter of fact, uh, I, can, I can get that data for us here uh, if, if we'd like to look at that in a, in a little while when it, when it becomes time. Perhaps actually I'll cover that in our Weather on the Ones forecast in a little bit more than 10 minutes. But Interstate 40 has some major delays um, in Duplin County during, again, and inside the severe thunderstorm mornings. We also have what appear to be um, basically parked cars in parts of Harnett and uh, Johnston County that could yep. be a result of uh, an accident. It could be a lot of different things, but I know that there have been multiple road closures due to earlier showers and thunderstorms. So it's not a good day for traveling. By the way, you saying that actually made me think of something. Worst possible scenario you could get under, oh, yeah. heavy rainfall, and what do you want to do? First thing, get under an overpass, right? So you're protected from the rain. If you're in your car, don't do that in a tornado warning. <laughs> that's the worst. That's one of the worst places you could possibly be in a car is under an overpass during a tornado warning. They act like wind tunnels, and it's, it's bad news. So... Yes, I know, probably shelter is, uh, is preferable, mm -hmm. but if, if you need to stop, if you do not feel comfortable driving uh, in heavy rainfall like this, and especially all this lightning, that's just an unbelievable amount of lightning. It looks like they uh, canceled the warning, so they did allow the tornado warning to expire. Good news there. Um, but just pull off to the side of the road. Yeah. You, know, you don't put, need to have the hazard lights on if you're driving. If you're on the side of the road, turn the hazard lights on. Please don't turn the hazard lights on while you're driving. That is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. I know that's kind of the first instinct for a lot of people, but uh, let's all just be safe out there because uh, today, tomorrow, they're, they're going to be pretty treacherous driving days, I, I think, with these uh, thunderstorms popping up. Yeah. And just the unbelievable amount of lightning this thing's putting down is, uh, is, is unreal. Right. The National Weather Service is still issuing what we call um, just barely below the limits of a severe thunderstorm warning or what we call special weather statements here for strong thunderstorms that are now increasing in intensity and in coverage in other parts of North Carolina, namely over parts of Orange and Durham County and also over portions of Scotland and Richmond counties, as well as Hope County. So thunderstorm development is increasing. A lot of those thunderstorms are on their way into Fayetteville, too. At least they're on that path, since a lot of the thunderstorms have been moving now more recently due northeast or due straight to the east. So at least we'll continue to cover thunderstorms like those for you here on Spectrum News 1. Every weathercast is less than 10 minutes away. So keep it here on Spectrum News 1 for the latest coverage on the storms throughout the day marks one year.